The news is a great way to improve your English, but let's be honest, the news can sometimes be very difficult to understand. In this English lesson, we are going to take a look at a news clip and talk about all of the hard things we find. Unfortunately, like so much of the news, this is a sad story. More bad news out of Ukraine. The Russian army attacked a military academy and a hospital, and many people lost their lives. Before we go too much further, I just want to offer my sympathies to all of the families who lost loved ones. Let's watch part of the news clip now, and I will be back to talk about it. Ukraine is reeling tonight after one of the deadliest Russian strikes since the full-scale war began more than two and a half years ago. Authorities say two missiles hit a military academy and a hospital in the central eastern town of Poltava today. Hundreds of miles from the front line, Russia's ballistic missiles struck so quickly, Ukrainian cadets had no time to search for safety. Reeling is a great verb to know. Reeling, it means feeling very shocked or confused. And for each of these terms, I will have a picture that I hope helps you. I will have an official definition and I will use that term in a sentence. Here is the sentence. After the attack, the people were reeling from the destruction around them. Yeah, when something really bad happens and people are feeling very sad and shocked and they can't believe that it happened, you can use the term reeling. They are reeling from the devastating news. Before we go too much further, if this English lesson is helping you improve, please hit that like button. And if this is your first time here, hit that subscribe button so you never miss another English lesson. The weird thing about the word real is that we can use it when we talk about fishing. It's that circular thing. It's that thing that's a circle that you twist or turn. You can reel in a fish. And notice the spelling. It's R-E-E-L, not R-E-A-L. If you look at that circular thing, that thing that is shaped like a circle, you can also have a movie reel. These are not used too often because everything is digital, but old movies used to come on a movie reel. Full scale war. It is super sad, but it is a war that involves all the resources and efforts of a country. During a full-scale war, yes, the military is affected. Unfortunately, during a full-scale war, civilians are also affected. Civilians are people who are not in the military. They're not in the army. The attack could lead to a full-scale war between the two countries. That is just an example sentence there is already a full-scale war between Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine is reeling tonight after one of the deadliest Russian strikes since the full-scale war began more than two and a half years ago. Authorities say two missiles hit a military academy and a hospital in the central eastern town of Poltava today. Hundreds of miles from the front line, Russia's ballistic missiles struck so quickly, Ukrainian cadets had no time to search for safety. A military school building and a nearby hospital both destroyed. In the news report, they mention the front line. What is the front line? The area where the fighting is happening the most. Soldiers at the front line faced the most danger during the battle. Ballistic. Ballistic is the next one. What does it mean? Related to missiles or bombs that are launched through the air. And in that picture, you can see a couple ballistic missiles. The army fired a ballistic missile at the enemy base. You can also use the word ballistic when somebody gets really mad. Here is a sentence using it 
that way. He went ballistic after his team lost the game. Cadets were mentioned. And if you look at that picture, those soldiers look very young. What is the official definition for cadet? Students who are training to be soldiers or officers. Officers is another way to say people who are in charge of soldiers. They're like the boss. The military academy was full of cadets when it was attacked. And just in case you don't know, academy is like a more official name for a school. Hundreds of miles from the front line, Russia's ballistic missiles struck so quickly, Ukrainian cadets had no time to search for safety. A military school building and a nearby hospital both destroyed, and nearby homes damaged, and a nearby school dusted itself off despite the danger. For this next one, I would like to talk about two terms at the same time, destroyed and damaged. Take a look below. Destroyed means something is completely ruined. You can no longer use it. Take a look at that building. Unfortunately, it is destroyed. People can no longer live in there. But if we look at this picture of a damaged car, you could probably still drive that car. Damaged means it is hurt, but not completely ruined. A nearby home was damaged, but the military academy was completely destroyed. Here is a great term. Unfortunately, this news is super sad but I get really happy when I think I can teach you something new. I think this is a phrasal verb only native English speakers use, dusted off or dusted itself off. What does it mean? To recover from something bad that happened. After the attack, the city dusted itself off and began to rebuild. And remember in English, when you see re in front of a verb, it means again. So in the picture, it looks like that neighborhood is rebuilding. Something was destroyed and they are going to build it again. Hopefully they will be able to rebuild after they clean up. I should say in that picture, it looks like they are cleaning up not yet rebuilding. And a nearby school dusted itself off despite the danger, said 12-year-old Alisa Stebel. It was scary, fear, panic. I don't know how to describe it. I was worried for my parents and my sister, for my loved ones. They mentioned panic, panic. What does that mean? A strong feeling of fear that makes people act without thinking. I feel so bad for all of the people living in Ukraine right now where war is happening. I know I would panic if I thought missiles were coming into my neighborhood. If you look at that picture, that is a face of panic. Here's a sentence. There was panic in the streets when the bombs started falling. Because this story is so sad, let's talk about my favorite movie for a second, Toy Story. Buzz and Woody find themselves lost. Buzz tells Woody something like, don't panic, this is not the time to panic. And Woody says, this is the perfect time to panic. Sheriff, this is no time to panic. This is the perfect time to panic. Loved ones, I mentioned loved ones at the beginning of this English lesson. In case you don't know what it is, let's talk about it. It's kind of what it sounds like. The people you care about, like family and close friends. It's a good way to talk about everyone you love. In the picture, it certainly looks like an older woman is celebrating a birthday and she is surrounded by her loved ones. Let's look at a sentence using loved ones. Many people were worried about their loved ones 
after the attack. Ukraine is reeling tonight after one of the deadliest Russian strikes since the full-scale war began more than two and a half years ago. Authorities say two missiles hit a military academy and a hospital in the central eastern town of Poltava today. Hundreds of miles from the front line, Russia's ballistic missiles struck so quickly, Ukrainian cadets had no time to search for safety. A military school building and a nearby hospital both destroyed, a nearby homes damaged, and a nearby school dusted itself off despite the danger, said 12-year-old Elisa Steva. It was scary. Fear, panic. I don't know how to describe it. I was worried for my parents and my sister, for my loved ones. Once again, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky argued the attack should unshackle U.S. restrictions on long-range American weapons. Unshackle or unshackled. Every time you see un at the beginning of a word in English, think not. So we need to talk about what shackles are first. In the picture, those are shackles. You might also hear handcuffs. It prevents a person from moving. But when we use unshackle, that means to free from something that holds you back. The country wanted to unshackle itself from the restrictions placed by its enemies. Restrictions. It's another way to say you can't do something. If your movement is restricted, you can't move like you want to. So let's get a formal definition of restrictions. Rules or limits that control what people can do. The government placed restrictions on movement to keep people safe during the attack. Remember in 2020 when the virus was going around, Many countries had restrictions on when people could leave their house. Speaking of house, we have a word with house in it, warehouse. It's a large building used to store goods. You know that word store. It can be a noun. It's a place where you buy things. You probably know that. But as a verb, we use it when we want to keep things safe. Maybe you ski. Well, in the summer, you can't use your skis, so you might store them somewhere safe, maybe in a closet. The warehouse near the hospital was also hit during the attack. That is an example sentence. President Zelensky says the U.S. should not keep these weapons in a warehouse. They should send them to Ukraine so they can use them. Once again, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky argued the attack should unshackle U.S. restrictions on long-range American weapons. Air defense systems and missiles are needed in Ukraine, not in a warehouse somewhere. Long-range strikes that can defend against Russian terror are needed now, not sometime later. Every day of delay, unfortunately, means more lives lost. Delay. If you travel, you probably know this. Delay. It means to make something happen later than it was supposed to. Let's say you are trying to go to work, but there is construction. That might delay you. You might get to work late. The aid or the help was delayed because of the ongoing fighting in the area. If you are ever going on vacation, and your flight was delayed, you know how this can affect people. At the end of this news clip, they talk about President Putin visiting the country of Mongolia. But today the war's architect was given an honor guard by a country that is legally obligated to arrest him. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited Mongolia, a member of the International Criminal Court that has demanded Putin's arrest. Let's be very careful with this word. One, it's hard to pronounce. And in the news clip, they don't use this word like you normally hear it. This word is pronounced architect. Architect. And usually an architect is someone who designs buildings. In the picture, you can see it looks like maybe one architect or maybe two. Maybe both of those people are architects. Maybe they're designing a building. 
but it's the second definition I want to focus on or helps plan something important. In the news clip, they talked about Putin being the architect of the war. He's the person who designed it. He's the person who has planned it. Here is a sentence using Putin as an architect. Some people say that Putin was the main architect behind Russia's military actions, and he planned them carefully. Love this word, obligated. Obligated, it means you have to do something. The official definition, feeling like you must do something because it's the right thing or because of rules. I don't feel obligated to teach these lessons. I do it because I really love doing it. But guess what? In the United States, parents are obligated to send their children to school if their children are under 16. I am curious, can you please leave a comment at what age can people drop out of school in your country? Like I said, in the United States, children under 16 are obligated to attend school. Here's a sentence using Mongolia and Putin. Many people believe Mongolia was obligated to arrest Putin because of the charges against him. But today the war's architect was given an honor guard by a country that is legally obligated to arrest him. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited Mongolia, a member of the International Criminal Court that has demanded Putin's arrest. Mongolia has built relationships with the West since it transitioned to democracy in the 90s, but its economy still depends on Russia, and the leaders announced today their ties would be strengthened. Ties would be strengthened. What does that mean, strengthened? Good word to know. Ties would be strengthened. That means relationships or connections between people or countries would become stronger. During his visit, Putin said that the ties between Russia and Mongolia would be strengthened. The two countries would become closer. They would share more things. Maybe more trade between the two countries would happen. International Criminal Court. Anytime you hear international, that means at least two nations are involved. The International Criminal Court is a court that deals with serious crimes, like war crimes, and it has the power to judge leaders of different countries. Some believe that the International Criminal Court should have been involved when Putin visited Mongolia because of the charges against him. This was not a fun story to talk about. Maybe next time I will pick a happier topic, but thank you so much for joining. I hope your English is a little better now. Right at the bottom is another news clip with Ukraine and Russia. Thanks so much. See you next time.